Brothers and sisters, it's an honor to be in Barbados for the first time. I come with you with greetings, revolutionary Pan-African greetings from your brothers and sisters in the United States. On May the 6th of 2016, President Obama sent a letter to every school district in the United States. And President Obama said, every child has a right to use the bathroom of the gender that they identify with. And President Obama threatened the State Departments of Education. If you don't let transgender children use the bathroom of the gender they identify with, we will cut your funding. We will cut your money. We will cut your grants. And so Barack Obama, more than any other politician in the world, fed the transgender movement against black children, brothers and sisters, and you need to understand that. Barack Obama is not the friend of black people, never was, never will be. Sometimes you got to wake up and recognize that everybody who look like you is not necessarily for you, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, get serious about our survival as African people. I don't think they can ever totally get rid of us, but they can definitely hurt our quality of life. They can definitely disadvantage the way we live our lives. Brothers and sisters, I've been told that an act of parliament in Britain abolished slavery in the British Islands August the 1st of 1834. If that's the case, if slavery ended in Barbados on August the 1st of 1834, can somebody tell me why the Barbadian government is about to issue a new child protective bill that will make it more difficult for the Barbadian parents to decide how you want to raise your children. They are doing in Barbados what they did in America. Let me tell you what your brothers and sisters go through in the streets of New York, in Philadelphia, in Atlanta, in Tennessee. If your child tells you that they want to be a girl when they're biologically a boy, if your child tells you they want to be a boy but they are biologically a girl, you are not allowed to disagree with your child. If you disagree with your child and your child goes to school and the child tells the teacher or the counselor or the nurse or the social worker that I want to be a girl, they can remove your child from your home. It's called gender-based discrimination and gender-based child abuse. So I'm seeing when I look at Barbados, and I'm looking at the Inter-American Development Bank, and I'm looking at the Barbados Family Planning Association, and I'm looking at this new child protective law that they're trying to introduce into Barbados, and I can see the writing on the wall. You will be the next casualty. You will be the next casualty in the global transgenderization war against African children. Is this information any good to you, brothers and sisters? Are you learning about what they're doing to our children? This is an assault on African life around the world, brothers and sisters. Why do you think Kamala Harris, U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris, just came back from Africa, threatened East African presidents with the elimination and termination of American aid if you don't make your country safe for gay marriage and transgender identity? Why does a government care? Why does a government care how another culture decides to define what a family is? Why do you care about how another culture decides to define marriage? You know why they care? I have to introduce transgenderism into every Caribbean island. I have to introduce transgenderism into every African country. I have to introduce transgenderism into every black community because only if I can the children into becoming a I never have to worry about any more black babies being born. Once you go through that surgery, there is no coming back. There is nothing more than eugenics reborn. What is eugenics? Eugenics is a movement that began in London with a white racist psychologist by the name of Francis Galton. Make sure you go home and do your research on Francis Galton and the eugenics movement. This was the movement that said black people were intellectually inferior to Europeans. This was the movement that said we have to systemically 
systemically sterilize black people so they can't have children because black people suffer from defected genes. This is the movement that said we have to reproduce white people because white people are superior to everyone except black. That movement came to America and gave birth to special education. That movement came to America and gave birth to ADHD. That movement came to America and gave birth to mandatory sterilization or forced hysterectomy. That movement went underground and now the movement is back but is wearing new clothes. The new eugenics movement is wearing the outfit of transgenderism. The new eugenics movement is wearing the outfit of childhood homosexuality and childhood lesbianism. But the goal is the same. The of African life through the propagation of transgender lifestyle in their children. Barbados, guess what? As a researcher, you need to know something where the Inter-American Development Bank gave your child that survey, and survey is a form of research. According to international law, you cannot conduct research on children without permission of their parents. So you have an international lawsuit, brothers and sisters. Barbados, you have an international lawsuit against the Inter-American Development Bank who gave your children that sexuality survey without your permission. Black power. Let me hear you say black power. Let me hear you say black power. Let me hear you say black power. Hear you say black power. Black power. Brothers and sisters, we are against nobody but we are 100% dedicated to the salvation and liberation of African people. As a pan-Africanist, I believe we are one. Whether you are in Barbados or Nigeria, whether you are in Harlem, New York, or Zimbabwe, whether you are in Haiti or Toronto, Canada, no matter what language you speak, no matter what God you pray to, no matter what texture of your hair, no matter what nationality you claim, we are one people, one family, one race, and we will decide what is best for African people, not the former colonizer, not the former enslaver. Go online and read what they doing behind your back. This is why you gotta turn off Facebook every once in a while. Turn off YouTube every once in a while. Turn off Instagram every once in a while. Pick up a book and pick up a newspaper and learn what's going on in this world because African people are in the middle of World War III. I wanna close. And before I close, I wanna say this to my parents. As a school psychologist that evaluates children for a living, I am sick and tired of our black parents throughout the diaspora making excuses for why your children are not achieving in school. Your child don't have a learning disability. Your child don't have a reading disability. Your child don't have a math disability. Your child has a lazy disability, brothers and sisters. A lazy disability. Black children are not achieving black excellence because black parents are allowing them to be lazy. Let me ask you a question. If I go to your house, how many of you have a bookshelf? If I go to your house, how many of you have a dictionary of more than 100 pages? If I go to your house, how many of you have a thesaurus? If I go to your house, how many of you have a quiet place for your sons and daughter to read and do their homework? How many of you check their homework? How many of you make them read outside of school hours? I'm gonna tell you why white children outperform black children in the Caribbean islands. I'm gonna tell you why Asian children outperform black children across the diaspora. You know why? The average Asian child spends 15 hours a week studying outside of school. The average Caucasian child spends 8 to 12 hours a week studying outside of school. In the average African child, whether he in Barbados, Bermuda, Bahamas, New York, or South Africa, only spends about 45 minutes a week studying outside of school. You know why your child test scores are low? For those of you who have children who are struggling, it's because their working vocabulary levels are low. And the reason their working vocabulary levels are low is you are not making them read. 
Make your child read for an hour every day. The reason they struggle on the tests is if I don't understand the words, I can't answer the question. If I don't understand the words, I can't answer the question. They are using vocabulary in English language mastery against black children's academic achievement. Our children are no less intelligent than any other child, but they are less motivated, and so are you. Show me a failing child, I'll show you a failing parent. And that's why if I was in charge, if I was in charge, we would never diagnose the child Diagnose the parents who are raising them. You are the reason for the academic underachievement. I want to close with a quote from my ancestor, Frederick Douglass. And before I close with that quote, I want to give you my cell phone number so you can reach me on WhatsApp. So take your phone out. This is my direct number. If you have an issue with your children, feel free to call on me. If your child has autism and you don't know what to do, feel free to call on me. Your child was diagnosed with a learning disability or an intellectual disability? Call on me if you need my help. I am minister of mental health and minister of education for the entire African diaspora. And one day we have to build a Frederick Douglass, Marcus Garvey, Busa campus in Barbados, brothers and sisters. I'm talking about Busa, that brave African revolutionary general who gave Barbados its largest and bravest and boldest slave insurrection back in the 1800s. His spirit is with you. But African people, we cannot win if we are too scared to speak up. Dr. King once said, the world is in greater peril, not from those who do evil, but from good people who watch it and do nothing. Let me say this, if your child is ever diagnosed as intellectually disabled, also known as mentally retarded, I will review that evaluation for free. You live under a British educational paradigm. In America, we live under a British educational paradigm. And I want you to know that the intelligence tests that we give as psychologists do not effectively determine intellectual disability. Black kids are being determined to be intellectually disabled and they are not. So if the school ever tells you your child is intellectually disabled, you can email the evaluation to Dr. Umar Ifatunde for free. I will review it for free. And you and I will have a conversation on the telephone for free. Because the future of African children lies in the minds of African people. Frederick Douglass said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess the faith of freedom but deprecate agitation are like men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want the rain but can't stand the thunder or the lightning. They want the ocean but they're scared of the roar of its waves. Frederick Douglass said, a man may not get all he pays for, but you will pay for all that you get. And if we as African people are ever to become free of the oppression and injustices inflicted upon us, we must pay for their removal. We may pay with words, we may pay with blows, we may pay with our life, but he who wants to be free must himself strike the first blow. Barbados, I love you. See you tonight. Bongo lights and coaches.